Can they see you back there? I don't know if they can. All right. Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the weekly landscape update video I do in my garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, things are really uh, taking off here uh, at the uh, beginning of June. Uh, it's very, very dry in my area, my part of uh, North Carolina, um, which is uh, kind of east of the middle um, of, the, of the state. Um, I don't know uh, about other areas t toward the western part of the state. It seems like maybe they've gotten a little more rain than we have, but it is horribly dry here, and I'm having to do more watering than I've had to do in the uh, first two seasons that I was uh, starting this garden, hoping this uh, cycle breaks. Maybe we can start getting some afternoon thunderstorms. I don't know. It's predicted for today as I'm filming this. Uh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Uh, things are really starting to kick in uh, for the summer now. Uh, we go through this, you know, period where all the early flowering things, you know, such as bulbs or azaleas or whatever, I have a lot of those kinds of things uh, in this landscape that bloomed. And then there is a transition period. And really for about the last three or four of these videos, I've been in this period where we're waiting for the summer flowering shrubs to start blooming and all the annuals to really start filling in. So but we're starting to see some color on those things now. So let's jump around and take a look at some of them. I'm gonna show you a spot on the other side of the driveway I generally uh, hide from the camera just because nothing had really been done over here uh, throughout this uh, project up until now. There's the city owns a uh, easement uh, on the edge over here, but there's two or three feet uh, to work with. And I have really hadn't done much with it. And, these, and it needs to be mulch now uh, actually, uh, but things are, up finally here and it's becoming you know it's it, it's becoming a it's becoming a garden bed now it's just a but it needs a needs mulch and it needs a little more time i have a russian sage that's planted right on the road you know they're extremely drought tolerant again you can see bare ground here you won't see that very often in my uh, in my uh, landscape uh, because normally i'm on top of keeping the ground covered but for right this second i had wood chips here and i've created a really nice topsoil using the uh, wood chips and then uh, some of the annual things like this cosmos uh, was put in and uh, there's a few zinnias uh, as well um, these are some binneries uh, right there there's a yellow uh, cosmos uh, right here it's really uh um, i really like that one a lot but uh, and there's some blueberries the blueberries have been planted over here for a while so it, this little bit's coming along it's just uh it, like again it needs to be uh, kind of cleaned up and mulched and put kind of put the the finishing touches on it. There's a white wedding hydrangea. This is an example here. Um, you see the flower buds starting to come. The summer flowering plants are finally uh, getting going. I'll show you a couple other hydrangea paniculatas that are budded up. I put in some sunflowers on the other side of the fence and they'll come up big and tall here. And, and st they're actually budded up now to uh, start opening and uh, blooming again. There's a couple blueberries. Uh, with fruit uh, on this side. A couple other varieties. This is a uh, Florida, this is a southern, a southern high bush variety that was done at the University of Florida that has already fruited and finished. Uh, you know, uh, uh, down in, you know, the, these super, super early flowering uh, varieties are amazing. It, it, it's a race to get blueberries to market. Uh, the earlier, the better, um, because the prices are higher when there's less blueberries at market. So. There's, that's that's been the race in blueberry breeding is who can get the earliest varieties uh, to market. There are some Mexican uh, sunflowers on the other side of that fence on that on that side of it. They'll they'll be big and tall here uh, by the time they start blooming. They're typically later in the summer. There were a couple St. John's wort put right as ground cover under these uh, blueberries, and you can see this one has a flower on it. If you've ever seen bees on St. John's wort, it's really kind of wild. They get manic on it. It's almost like they're drunk on it. I mean, they absolutely lose their minds. So one will find that flower today and they just, they just, they go into some hyper burst. It's kind of wild. Behind the uh, next uh, fence, there's a couple more sunflowers and uh, there's a goldenrod that's peeking its head up over the top. It'll be blooming yellow late summer, early fall. And then the main plant, that I wanted to show off was this pineapple guava that's in in flower right there. You can see that flower, I get it to focus on it. I don't grow the pineapple guava for fruit. I don't have a long enough growing season uh, for the fruit, uh, but the flowers are quite beautiful and the plant is amazing. It has this incredible blue-green 
blue-green foliage. You can kind of keep this whatever size you want to keep it. It can get pretty big if you don't. There's one at the Ralston that's probably uh, six to eight feet tall and maybe five or six feet uh, wide. I'll have to keep this one narrower because it's next to the uh, driveway, but that blue-green foliage is uh, really, really striking. And these flowers are so unique. I mean, they're just, just wildly uh, unique, and the pollinators love them. Back on the other side of the uh, driveway, and Holly has decided that she wasn't in that entire clip, and that was somehow problematic, so she joined me. Uh, Clethra is starting to uh, show some color. Well, it's just the flower buds so far on this uh, hummingbird clethra, and my uh, ruby spice clethra is uh, next to it. Again, this is, you know, consider these summer flowering shrubs and natives, uh, but they'll be showing some color here in the next week or two, but that's what I'm talking about, where it's, we're in that, we've been in that transition between the spring flowering shrubs and the summer flowering shrubs. Here's that annual bed that I was in when we started. The uh, American Beautyberry has the flowers that start low on the stems, and I get that to focus down in there. Um, you see the flowers that are along the stems? They're just starting to open. And what this uh, um, Calicarpa Americana will do is down there in that oldest growth, we'll get the first flowers and then we'll get a berry set that just follows the stem throughout the season. This plant will continue to grow for the next two or three months, you know, right through July and August. And uh, as it does, uh, it will continue to flower and set more and more berries uh, up the stems. Birds absolutely love these. This is a white flowering, uh, white flowering cultivar. Uh, let's swing out here to the, uh, to the road real quick. Um, butterfly bush starting to show some colors. This is that butterfly towers. I've talked about it a lot, so I won't talk about it, but I'm just showing off the, uh, the fact again, uh, you know, here we have summer flowers finally uh, on, the, on the shrubs. The street area out here um, is really has fantastic, fantastic color, but it's definitely not a complete, you know, it's not complete out here. Um, there's definitely, you know, there's some, there's some holes around the ground and I typically like to get, you know, things planted, you know, ground covers and things right down to the ground. So more work to do, but it's coming along. Uh, behind the uh, fence right here is a moon dance hydrangea paniculata. And again, you see the flower buds on it. So we're again, we're another uh, week or two um, before we start to see some real color on it. In fact, if I jump over to the other side of it, you can see a couple more there that are a little bit further along. This thing will just be solid, solid white. Well, it'll start kind of a lime green color like we know a lot of these paniculata start off and then it'll be bright white by, by midsummer. Unfortunately, it's probably gonna be a water hog here in the next few weeks unless we get some, unless we get some rain to really get the show out of it. I'm gonna have to water it. Um, maybe the rain will help with that. And again, another butterfly bush, another dwarf butterfly bush that's out here by the road is just starting to put on some color. Lots of annuals were started from seed here at the house uh, for this year. Uh, and you guys saw the videos for them. You saw that first annual bed over there that's probably the furthest along at this point. The ones along the turf, the one here and the one in the back that we'll see ju in just a minute are really starting to fill in. The gomfrina is starting to show some, starting to show some color. Um, and uh, uh, lots of the salvias, several different salvias out here. Uh, Celosia starting to show some color. So again, and the perennials, the perennials went in behind uh, the annuals. And so salvia that's coming back from last year and uh, asters and gara, uh, just lots of, you know, pineapple sage, uh, cone flowers, all of those things are starting to come on as well. Hopefully they end up a little bit taller than the annuals in the front, but for now the annuals are always going to be a little bit faster a little bit faster to get out of the uh, gate. Uh, one thing to take a look at here is the African basil. I put, last year I put three of these African basil in here and it took over this entire area. In fact, it laid on this uh, salvia and almost killed it. But it wasn't growing a whole lot. It waits to get some roots underneath it and then it takes off. And in the last few days, this thing has gone from this big uh, to this big and it's on its way. It'll, it'll, it'll fill in a big giant space. Seems like a big giant hole back here, but I've got one lantana back here that will take over a big space and then this uh, African basil, uh, which smells fantastic. It's not, it's not a culinary uh, basil. It's really out here for the uh, pollinators. A couple of other interesting shrubs in the uh, front garden space. Uh, this is a Lanicera, uh, Lanicera 
uh, being in the honeysuckle family. So you, when you think honeysuckle, a lot of times we're thinking about vines and things climbing on things and getting out of control. Uh, this is Lanisra nidida, which is a shrub uh, form of Lanisra. And this is a variegated form. This is a variegata. There are actually three that the Southern Living Plant Collection is uh, in the process of releasing that uh, they're, um, th th these are some kind of called box honeysuckle. Uh, meaning they they grow like boxwoods. Um, they have a bo you know boxwood like habits. This is variegata. The three that they're releasing one has purple foliage and um, one of them's called green cloud. Uh, perfect little round uh, boxwood uh, type replacements, but just great, really great ornamental plants. Uh, I initially let something grow onto the top to the side. This one's planted right there. All the growth is going to the left of it. And uh, the reason for that is I had something that laid on it uh, last year. Um, that, that happens frequently sometimes when you plant as many things in a garden as I do. It's actually turned out, it's made it more interesting, but there really a lot of growth is coming out on it now. Just a little bright, just a little bright patch out here in the front garden and it's evergreen. Uh, behind it, my sistrum, parquet is starting to uh, flower. I had a, a garden tour, a neighborhood garden tour here uh, this weekend thanks for anybody who's watching this that came out there were about probably about 60 people over three hours showed up for it was a neighborhood um, based uh, tour of some gardens in the neighborhood you guys have seen that i have some pretty nice gardens in my neighborhood and you're going to see one other tour uh, as a uh, result of that but this thing's butted up like crazy uh, just a super interesting plant i understand some places on earth this is a, a you know a noxious weed here in north carolina are our cold weather uh, keeps it in check. And uh, it was in a pruning video a few weeks, uh, a couple weeks ago, if you wanna go back and take a look at how I pruned it. It's just an upright uh, kind of tree form um, growth habit now. Here's a spot on the uh, south side of the house, but it's extremely, uh, it, it's extremely shady. Uh, there's a uh, red bud above my, uh, above my head, just a na regular native Circus canadensis, uh, you know, na native red bud uh, to the, uh, uh, that, that, you, that you see everywhere and it seeds itself like crazy too. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny, uh, you know, people, you know, we only sometimes label non, you know, non-native plants as invasive when they get out of control. But uh, in the right location, you know, this red bud can be, um, it's, a, it's very seedy. Uh, there's a calla lily that was actually dug from a, uh, divided from a friend's uh, landscape uh, last year and it has found a home. It has gone absolutely wild. It did have flowers on it earlier. Uh, they've actually been cut, you know, cut back right there. So uh, beautiful plant. You know, has that in, you know tropical look. Um, one of those, you know, you look at it and think, well, that thing can't be, you know, probably not hardy. Um, but it, but it is quite hardy and uh, looks like a house plant uh, out here in the garden. I think you could see the Roman candle uh, podocarpus. Yeah, you can right there. Uh, I've got two of these uh, in the landscape. This one's actually putting on a good amount of growth. One's in a little more sun. This one's in quite a bit of shade, and it's still it's showing a lot of color. So, you know, I'm impressed with the uh, shade tolerance here on this uh, Roman candle podocarpus. I want to say candles every time, but, it's for, but it was named candle. So I'm trying to remember it. Uh, Roman candle podocarpus. On these weekly videos, I try to show some things that I haven't shown uh, or haven't shown in a while. Uh, this uh, variegated... Nandina has really um, taken off this uh, spring and uh, is really starting to uh, take form. Didn't have a lot of the variegation in it the first year. You know, I have to say this pretty frequently. Uh, sometimes you put something in and it's, you know, it's got to go through a transition. And so last year it had very little of the variegation uh, in the foliage that you start to see now. This one is very similar to firepower. It's going to be red in the uh, wintertime. But then during the growing season, the new growth all has that uh, variegation on it. Neat little, uh, neat little round ball uh, in that spot. I'm going to go back here and see if I can find a bee uh, cheating the system on this uh, salvia. I'm hoping uh, that one will uh, show up while we're looking uh, at this salvia. This is a uh, black and bloom. Um, this one's pretty reliable coming back. There's a bee right there. Uh, and take a look, he can't, that's a honey bee and it can't go, none of the bees can, but none of the bees can go into the end of the flower Notice he's back on the calyx. He's drilling a hole uh, in the back of the flower, uh, cheating the system. Uh, uh, hopefully, um, I think he's 
they've taken off. Okay, let's move to the next one. But I just wanted you guys to see that. I've shown it before, but it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to watch. Uh, they don't, they can't, they have no access. This thing is designed for a hummingbird uh, or something with a really long proboscis, you know, to reach back into the back of that flower. So the bee has to come along and drill a hole uh, back here in the calyx to, uh, to get the nectar out of it. I started this video out talking about uh, summer flowers and, uh, you know, that it's about that time, finally. The Vitex, uh, this is a Vitex called Summertime Blues, which is about, I'm six feet tall, it's a hair taller than me. I cut it back hard, if you saw that uh, last year, and uh, it has uh, come out. The Vitex blooms on new growth, so there's no point in, I mean, you know, it's gonna get, basically, from where I cut it, uh, right there, it's grown three feet in order to flower up here at the top, maybe even a hair more than three feet. So keep that in mind. It's one of those plants that, you know, you probably, um, you know, I want, I want to cut on it a bit, unless you have room for it to become a, you know, 20 foot tree, which is fine. Uh, they look great that way. But for me, I'm going to try to keep this thing around, you know, blooming at eight feet or so every year. So I'm probably going to cut it down to about four or a little more in the winter time. Uh, sun is starting to uh, come up over the house and getting pretty blown out in the background, I'm sure. I covered a lot of the uh, uh, dahlias last week, so I will uh, just walk us past the dahlias this week. And there's a ton, there's a ton more that have started blooming since then. And I'll show them again in a week or two once we have uh, more of them, uh, more of them flowering. I want to walk back here and show you the tree form. Uh, the bricks that are on the other side of the fence there, you see that pile of bricks? Uh, those uh, used bricks are going to become part of my uh, patio uh, plan for where the lawn is in the back. That's why they're there. Um, the uh, tree form hydrangea paniculata is uh, budded up up here. So I'm going to see this thing bloom for the first time uh, in the process of tree forming it. I haven't seen it actually flower. And this was a variety that was given to me by uh, Dr. Durr. It was on their, literally on their throwaway pile. So we're going to see what the flowers look like. He had kept it long enough to assess it. Um, you know, right up until the end. So I imagine it's impressive, but we, we shall see. Uh, again, coming back around there, lots and lots of uh, dahlias blooming. My tomatoes are up to the top of the, uh, uh, up to the top of the cattle panels at this point. And one last thing I'll show you for this week is Rudbeckia starting to bloom. We've seen lots of cone flowers out here, but I also have lots of uh, Rudbeckia as well. Uh, this is Prairie Sun, which is uh, one of my favorites. It'll start to get some um, different colors uh, in the middle of the uh, flower a little later on. Uh, great, great one. Uh, it'll, it'll look like, it'll actually, on Prairie Sun, it tends to look like there's multiple different flowers on the same plant. They'll open kind of a bright yellow and then um, get a little bit of orangey uh, color in them. But again, I have several different varieties. These were all done from seed here uh, at the house. Again, I think everything is really looking pretty pretty spiffy out here. Uh, I actually, you know, I'm, I need to cover the ground a little bit with some mulch. I've got a few weeds in here. Again, I had this tour here this weekend and I'm, you know, it allowed me some time just to stand here and stare at the ground while I was talking to people. There are definitely more weeds than I would typically have out here. And part of that is because the ground is not, uh, it needs, it needs mulch. Um, it's just time, you know, that, 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 that happens. But Overall, the space is looking pretty good, I think, and I'll be back next week with one of these uh, garden tour videos. Uh, thanks for following along with the channel.